Riley, I'm excited to speak to you today. I'm excited. <laughs> Thanks. So fun fact, I grew up watching your dad on Rocco's Modern Life. And so when I figured out that he was your dad and that you were in the Star Trek show, I just kind of blew my mind. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, so I, I would love to hear a little more about that. Tell me more about your decision to start voice acting. Okay, so I started the whole acting, voice acting and, you know, on-camera acting when I was little because mm -hmm. my dad, he is an actor and a voice actor. So right when I was like a baby, maybe like a year old, two years old, um, <clears throat> my mom and dad, I don't really know exactly how the story went because I was really young, but they, <laughs> they kind of put me into the business because my dad was in it and my sister's in it too. So kind of, kind of like my whole family, um, except my mom, she does some of it, but you know, so <laughs> we went down kind of like that. So like we each do a little bit of acting. So I got, I kind of got put into it and then I just kind of grew up do, doing a few jobs here and there, commercials, you know, little commercials. And then when I got the audition for Star Trek Prodigy and boom, it just happened. <laughs> That's cool. Do you uh, have a preference of doing voice acting or on-camera acting? Mm, both I really like, mm -hmm. but I would have to say on-camera only because I feel like it's just um, since, you know, COVID hit, definitely with these recordings it's still so much fun I get to see you know the whole crew crew when I record but for on camera I definitely think it's like a, a more fun experience to kind of go and like see a set a whole set you know and get into different clothes for it and act with other people rather than you know going into a studio and recording but that is also really fun too because you can also make relationships inside the studio with the different type of people and get closer with your crew that you're working with. But I definitely do prefer on-camera act acting only because I think it's just a more fun experience. Very cool. Um, so I, I would love to hear a little more about the recording process. I, I got to talk to Angus last week and he said that oftentimes he's just recording by himself uh, because everybody's in different places. So um if I had to guess, I would think more of the actors are in your area. Uh, do you get to record with some of the other actors on the show, or are you mostly by yourself? Unfortunately, I don't. Oh, um, bummer. We have only, I have never met Angus, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't met Jason. I haven't mm -hmm. met all those people. You know, it's hard. I've only, I've met Brett. I've met Ella. Um, I've met D. I've met Jimmy. I've met, you know, all those people. But like, it's so hard because, oh, hold on, there's my dogs. Okay, it's so hard because we're <laughs> we're all we're all in different areas, so we don't get to report each other with each other. So I go in the studio. Um, I normally with. You know, I'm with a guy, I'm with the guy who runs the microphone and stuff like that and all the, all that stuff. And then I'm with, they put up a Zoom call with Kevin, Dan, you know, all the producers, Brooke, um, and we all just get together and do that. But with working with each other, it's hard because we can't. Mm -hmm. so it's like, if ever, we've only had a few get togethers and when that happens, everyone goes excited because that's like the one time where we all get to get together. And New York Comic Con was like the one time where we really all got together and got to speak about the show together, which was awesome. Very cool. Very cool. I think it's really impressive uh, that you guys are able to pull off such like a great show and like have, I mean, for want of better terminology, like really good on-screen chemistry, even though none of you have ever been in the same room together, like yeah. recording. So I think that's really cool. Um, so one of the things I really love about Rock Talk, which by the way, I think Rock Talk is my favorite character, <laughs> um, 
is that she breaks stereotypes uh, you know she's she's really big and strong but she's actually like a young girl um you know they first want her to be the security officer because she's so strong um but then uh she uh you know she wants to be a scientist uh were you surprised to learn those things about rock talk um yeah i i have a feeling that it was happening because as i went through the recordings the vocabulary started getting more difficult <laughs> um and i did not really know what i was saying just kind of going for it and, and as the episodes went on the vocabulary got more different harder and as you watch the episodes it was like oh wait she's kind of into this now but i thought she was into this so she's kind of developing this love for science and <clears throat> she is she has this whole new hobby and she's really focusing on that and i feel like i i sort of saw it coming with the vocabulary and stuff like that but you know you would think she's the security guard who's tough and she's strong when she doesn't want to be but finally she can kind of break free from that pressure and she goes wait I really like this and now she's focusing her love for science and as you see as the episodes go on um I definitely think viewers are going to see how she really 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 learns and has that love for science and she keeps working hard for it maybe one day again to Starfleet you know mm -hmm. and she's just really dedicating her old self to science that's cool so do you see um any of yourself in rock talk um, is she similar or different from you in different ways? Um, she is similar and she is different. Uh, we both, we both have that same love for, you know, animals. She has that love for Murph. Yeah. Um, and as the episodes go by, you will see more stuff about her love for animals as well. Um, I definitely, we're both animal lovers. She's very kind and, uh, she's very she looks very strong and tall and I'm very tall for my age I'm Good five I'm five foot three and I'm only in sixth grade so I can look older than I am and maybe more like mean or like those typical type of mean girl but then once you really get to know her she's like a whole nother person inside you know she loves to be funny with her friends and she has this cute little voice and a cute little pet has a love for science has a love for everything and you know I think we can really relate to that stuff and I think we can really relate to just being different from other people but then in the inside you're just you and don't judge a book by your cover that's all I have to say no I think that's good <laughs> no so what is the most important thing any kid or adult uh, can learn from watching Star Trek Prodigy? Uh, definitely to, well, here's one thing that I kind of think is really important is to believe. So, you know, even, even with everything that's going on the crew still stays together and they still have a strong bond together and they're all learning how to you know work with each other you know Jake and Pog he is crazy but everyone's learning how to cope with him Dow sometimes he wants to be bossy be the captain everyone's working around him you know everyone has their differences and everyone's learning on how to get closer with them and the whole crew is just bonding even more you know with Jane Wayne and everyone and I think that as the show goes on, everyone is going to get closer and learn how to be different. And I think with Starfleet and everyone, everyone around them, like all these, all these things, the whole universe of Star Trek is just about believing on what you want to be, because obviously the crew, their goal is to get in Star Trek, a uh, Starfleet and complete Mrs. Miss, oh my God, missions. And I think that it's just to believe in yourself and you will get there and accept everyone. Don't judge a book by their cover and just keep the relationships around you tight because you're going to need it someday. I think those are good lessons for anybody to learn. Very cool. 
Well, one last question real quick. Something I love to ask any Star Trek actor I get to talk to. Who's your captain? Ooh, my captain. You know, I'm sorry, Dal, but definitely Janeway. I think that Janeway is the one who leads us on the right thing to do. And then Dal's kind of the one who goes, okay, yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> I definitely think Janeway as the episodes go by she you're gonna see how she got she's the one who really guides us through and tells us what to do and tells us what's safe and not safe and helps us get into that whole Starfleet thing and you know helps us complete our missions and be better that's awesome she's my captain too yeah awesome thank you so much for your time today Riley it was really fantastic to talk to you have a nice day you too all right